Uh, we want to continue now. The news that we shared with everybody at the top of the show, George, you testing positive for coronavirus. We're so happy to hear that Allie, who tested positive earlier this month, that Allie is feeling much, much better. And George, I got to say, a lot of people have been concerned about you, myself included, even viewers weighing in. You didn't quite seem like yourself, but how are you feeling? I feel fine, Robin. I actually feel great. And as I was saying at the top uh, of the the broadcast, I think maybe not seeming like myself might have a little bit more to do with this setup here at my house than how yeah. I was feeling. Yeah. But I've, I can I've, relate. I've never had uh, yes. I've never had a fever. Uh, never had cough. Never had shortness of breath. Never had chills. Any of the classic symptoms you've been reading about and like everyone else I've gone, I've gone back over the last several weeks to think about what what could it have been and, and there was one night several weeks ago uh, where I went to bed early with a, some lower back pain I actually thought is was from a hard workout that day and it cleared up the next mm. morning and then several days after that I had one day where I had a diminished sense of smell but that was that's really been it uh, mm. for my symptoms over these last uh, several weeks. Um, I was taking the test fully expecting it was going to come back uh, negative, but in fact it did come back uh, positive. Mm. And, and I just want to bring in uh, Dr. Jen to talk a little bit more uh, mm. about this. And Jen, we've talked about this offline. So many relatively asymptomatic people out there. Exactly, George, and I'm glad you're feeling better, and Allie, too. But, you know, we've, we've talked about the fact that so far the CDC had estimated that one in four people who are, in fact, infected with COVID-19 show no symptoms at all. Recent data just out of Iceland, who's be able to test a lot more people because they have a much smaller country and they've been much more aggressive with testing everyone, not just people with symptoms, they're finding that 50 percent of people who are infected with COVID-19 COVID-19 show no symptoms at all. So that is part of why it's so difficult to contain this virus. Yeah, and and, and do, do we know much more about, you know, you just look in our house, it's affected Allie and I in such different ways. You know, you read all kinds of things on the internet. Oh, maybe it has something to do with blood type. Maybe it has something to do with something else. What is the science on that? Or is it just too early to tell? It's too early to tell, George. We have to remember this vi virus is just about four months old. So literally, we're learning things about the way it behaves and the way it transmits and causes disease every day. But one of the theories is that it has to do with how much of the actual viral particles or the viral load someone gets exposed to. That may be one part of it. Your immune reaction to the virus may be another part. Um, where the virus actually lodges, we know it attaches to cells in the respiratory track, but exactly where may have something to do with it. And again, I think in terms of the symptoms, it's important for people to understand when we say about 80 percent of cases are mild, that doesn't mean pleasant. You know, Allie's case clinically was defined as mild because she didn't need hospitalization, but it certainly wasn't pleasant. So you you got lucky for sure. And, and Jen, after George and Allie recovered yeah, no from the, about that. Yeah, but uh, Jen, after George and Allie recovered from the virus, does that make them immediately immune to it? We don't know, Michael, and that's the really hard thing. Every time we're exposed to a virus, yes, we develop some immune re reaction or protection, but when that occurs, how strong it is, how long it will last, all unknowns. And remember, there are slightly different strains of this virus, just like any other coronavirus or cold virus. So you could be exposed to a different one um, and get sick. So we're still learning that. It's really will be important information. And George, um, excuse me, Jen, where are we with antibody testing? Where are we with that? Not where we should be, Robin. I mean, in order to ease up on the social distancing and kind of reopen, as we hear Dr. Fauci talk about, we need to be able to test people very quickly in five or 15 minutes and try to get an idea whether they've been exposed, whether they've recovered, or whether they're actually infected, just like almost like a home pregnancy test. And that needs to be done quickly, and it needs to be done accurately. And we don't know how accurate those tests will be yet. Dr. Jen, thank you so much for, for always answering our questions. We really appreciate it. And we'll talk to you, I'm sure, later on in the show. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime.
We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.